Okay. So what we're going to demonstrate here is the installation of the Centex Solar Sample, what I term as the hidden champion. So this has been sitting in uh, a solution of water and bleach for 12 hours. And that just removes any impurities or grease or stuff from the surface of the solar sampler. I'll get it out and show you what it looks like. So there's a the solar sampler. Beautiful in its simplicity, isn't it? Uh, this is an existing Centec probe. It's a five sensor probe, moisture, tri scan at 30, then another moisture at 50, tri scan at 70, and another moisture at a meter. I'm going to use the solar sampler to calibrate the tri scan sensor on the probe. And we're going to put that solar sampler at 30 centimeters so we can calibrate the tri scan sensor on the probe. And this is going to be the location of the solar sampler. This is being installed at 30 centimeters. But we collect all the soil we get out of this hole because we need to make a slurry. Um, so you just put a little bit of that in the bottom. Okay, once you remove the um, solid sampler from the water, bring it over. We've already put the slurry in here. If this was sand, uh, fairly sandy soil, we'd probably want to be a lot quicker than that. You get your dowel. You gently push that down to the bottom of the hole. Now keep in mind it's the bottom part of the ceramic that's at 30 centimetres. 100 mm plastic above that. So that's in there. Then what you're going to do is you've got to get some soil and tamp that down. And then you get a bit of bentonite. Yeah, well the bentonite is to, uh, to, to form a plug above the top of the solid sample so you don't get preferential flow. Uh, other thing too is keep the poly tube sort of pretty well in the middle of the hole. Yeah, so once you've done that, you get the dirt, that the remaining dirt in the bucket. You basically fill the rest of the hole up with that dirt. Now the whole idea of this is you've got to make a really good seal because you're going to apply 60 kp of vacuum on this and if you haven't got a good seal it's just going to suck the air in from above it. And this is why it's a hidden champion, look at that. That is all that you can see from a solid sampler. So what I usually do is I wrap this around the wire Okay, now we're about to um, prime the solid sampler. So you need the syringe, nice clean fresh water. This one, what we're doing is we're filling the solid sampler with water and trying to push water through the solid sampler into the soil just to clean all the pores. Now this is a low flow solid sampler, so <laughs> it is damn hard to get water into it. A little bit of time and then I'll extract that in a minute. Yeah, so what I'll do in a minute is I'll put a vacuum on there. Uh, three syringe fulls is about 60 kPa and leave it. And the first reading I could probably get tomorrow, oh, it's pretty heavy soil, so I'd give it 24 hours, come and extract that. The next one will be the one I look at. And you'll see the pressure's in there, this will come up by itself. So take that off, get rid of that water. Put it back on there. Turn it back on, pull this out. So we're, we're putting a 40 to 60 kPa vacuum on there. The trick here is to get a good consistent sample every time. So again, we'll go for another one. It's getting hard now because the vacuum in the But that's good, it means the installation's good. There, it's all ready to go now. I'll show you now how much vacuum we have in that tube. This is a simple little gauge. And if I put that on there and turn this on, you'll see that gauge will go up to 60, PS, uh, 60 kPa in vacuum. I suppose in summary with the solid sampler, the more baselines you can establish, the more accurate your data is. So we've got Three syringe fulls, 60 kPa each time. We've got a solid sampler that's in, in situ, so it's always taken from the same sample. The third one, which is can only be done with a moisture probe, is if you set on your uh, sum graph, for the sensor that relates to the solid sampler, a point to take the reading, that means you're always collecting the sample with the same soil moisture. So you've got each three baselines 
which means your data becomes very accurate and repeatable. <laughs>